how do you maintain focus? You know, how how do you just maintain that focus? Because I would imagine if you're like me, you'll get up from your computer in the middle of something you're really excited about, and you'll have to go do something that you know you're you might not be as excited about. How do you keep intentional? What do you do to make that happen? So that's a really good question, Dave. And I've you know I've had a little experience on both sides of this because you know like you meant like you, I worked for a nonprofit when I was first working on my side hustle. Um, so. For a little over a year, I worked for a, our, the my church's campus ministry. I was a regional coordinator for the whole southeast. So whenever I wasn't traveling, I was actually working from home. Um, so which was also, I mean, it was it was. So there were a lot of overlapping things there, in that I helped our, I helped manage our organization's blog. Actually, I helped to set it up, mm -hmm. um, and I helped uh, handle social media accounts. So like a lot of the same stuff I was doing for my own stuff. There's definitely a lot of uh, very specific things in the nonprofit that I don't do in my business, but there was a lot of overlap. And honestly, I would say now that I've done both, I much more prefer the situation I have now, which is that there's a very clean de delineation between when I'm working for Chick-fil-A and when I'm working for my business. Mm -hmm. And so there's a mental switch that really happens when, you know, and, and, I, and honestly, I'm blessed in the fact that I love both. Yeah. Um, now, I don't intend to work for Chick-fil-A forever, but they know that, and the operator and the other manager there are really supportive. They're always asking, hey, man, how's your business going? You know, this month, you know, like, like how many new clients you got? Like, they're always asking me. So it's that's really encouraging. Um, but at the same time, I know when I clocked into Chick-fil-A, I'm 100% focused on Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Um, I'm focused on making sure that we have we train our staff really well, that they know how to create raving fans, um, and that we're running successful shifts. And yeah. then the minute I clock out and come home, if I'm not sleeping, eating, or spending time with my wife, I'm clocked in on my business. Yeah. Um, and I actually only recently started actually using a time clock when I work on my business, and it's been really interesting to see how that affects me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's what I do is um, I would say now that I've done both, I have so much more energy to focus on my business because before, because there was overlap, when I finished working for OCF, our campus ministry, mm -hmm. the last thing I wanted to do was spend another two hours on social media or blogging <laughs> that's what I just did, you know, like, yeah. so... Um, we, you know, which I'm sure you can relate to. So, really? I mean, that was, uh, so, and honestly, it's been really good. Time management has been key to success, um, but it's been definitely, I would say it's been good to have that, uh, that balance. You know? That's great. Well, you know, for me, exactly what you were saying, I did struggle big time with the idea of being 100% mentally checked in at my day job because what would happen is I would learn something new and then I would be torn on, you know, immediately thinking about how I was going to apply it to the business, but also how I was going to apply it to my side work too. Mm -hmm. and so one of the things that I did, I, I realized that that was an issue, and I had a relationship with my direct report um, where I felt very comfortable and I actually felt a duty to, I was on, um, uh, what do you call it, full-time salary exempt, so you know I didn't have to clock in, clock out, I just had to make sure to put in my hours and get my stuff done. So I brought him, him in the loop and I said, hey, um, like when I started my podcast, I said, hey, I just want to let you know, um, you know, this is something that I want to do, uh, the podcast conversations that I'm going to have to have during the day, or that I'm going to have to have are going to happen during the day, but I'll make sure to get my work done, I'll make sure that you're not lacking um, anything from me? Are you okay if I pursue this? And he said absolutely. And so, um, you know, I know a lot of uh, a lot of um, leadership people out there, and a lot of people you and I both look up to say that that's a necessity. And I would say it is a necessity, but also at the same time, you need to be wise about um, you know how you word that, how you bring it up, who you bring it up to, and uh, because sometimes people can look at that sort of thing as a threat. Like if you're not 100% yes. working all of your hours and putting all of your energy towards you know, you know, job A, then somehow you're a nemesis to job A, and you can't, you know, you can't do both. So, um, so I think there's wisdom in in making sure to be upfront and honest, but then also, you know, 100% honest doesn't mean 100% transparent as well. It means you know, sharing based on wisdom and stuff. So I was able to be 100% transparent with my direct report, and so I just brought him in the loop and I said, hey, this is what I have going on, and if I had something that was going to take me away from my day job for an extended period of time, I would say, hey, here's what I have going on. You know, this Thursday. Um, here's how I plan to make it up on Friday and Saturday. Do you have any questions, concerns, or things you would like for me to think about? Um, and he would be like, nope, you're good to go. So it was a bit of a challenge, but I had enough freedom in my day job to 
kind of exchange some of the hours. And honestly, I did that with 100% complete uh, integrity and character. Like I didn't cheat my day job at all. They got my very best. And honestly, in some cases, they got even better than what I would have been capable otherwise because I was learning so much in the side oh, yeah. and stuff that I was working on. They directly benefited from that. And I think my direct report, I think he saw a lot of that um, because you know during during reviews and things like that, he was always emphasizing areas of growth, and they were areas that were directly connected to my side hustle. So that was that That's was good. something that was really hard to balance. But I also figured out you know a way that worked for me. Um, you know, to do that with integrity and know that I was giving my best effort to, you know, quite honestly, the position that was paying paying the bills and keeping food on the table, you know? 